Hi everyone, my name is Nafal Sengul Sin and I'm here to be giving a talk on building platform from first principles. This will relate to the culture track of PlatformCon where we talk about how to build platforms and uh, the, how, to, how to structure the teams that's behind building platforms, right? So first, just a little bit about me. Why am I here? Why am I the one giving this talk? I'm currently in Dublin, Ireland. I'm actually from Bangkok, Thailand originally. And currently, I'm the co-founder and CTO of a stealth startup called Plotvana, where we are trying to solve making production an easier, like operating production an easier experience for everyone. And prior to that, I spent the majority of my career at Dropbox. I was most recently the tech lead for the team called Application Services, where we ship the application platform for all product engineering at Dropbox. I was also involved in the production deployment and CI and development infrastructure side of things throughout my time at Dropbox. So I spent the majority of my career building platforms for internal users at the company from both the production side and also the CI development side of things. And so today I'm going to be talking about building platforms from first principles. I'll first talk about what happens if you build platform tactically and why you wouldn't want to do that. And then we will talk about why platform is actually a business strategy. And if that's the case, what is the role of principles in all of this? Why do we need them? So let's talk about building tactically first. I'll tell you a story that I think will be pretty familiar to a lot of you. Let's say that you have a great idea for a startup and you want to build a product. Right. And you socialize the idea. You talk to potential customers, talk to investors, and they're all interested. You found a group of like-minded engineers to go build this idea with you. And together, you build a product, right? Using a stack that I think it's fairly common among companies today. Like there's some runtime, let's say Kubernetes, some amount of configuration in JSON and YAML, some data storage, and then some web server, right? You ship it to your customers. And your first customer is extremely happy. They send it to their friends and they're all very happy with the product. But then some things happen. They start to get angry at you. And you couldn't tell why. You investigated it and it has nothing to do with what your product actually is, but rather some of the technology that you chose to use to build your product is not operating the, the, in the way that you thought it would operate at. So you look into it you became an expert in the technology, you realized that you misconfigured something and you needed to turn this configuration settings on. But now you have to look into, okay, what's the deployment process for this configuration? Oh, this technology is quite ancient. You actually need to, in order to be able to deploy uh, this configuration, configuration change, you actually have to spin up a whole new stack and switch traffic over. And before you know it, this unravels a whole rabbit hole around uh, building uh, guardrails for all these technologies and your stack has gotten much, much more complicated. And you have ended up hiring a full team of people just to deal with the stack. And at this point, you're not providing any values back to your users in terms of the product and the business. What, what happened? How did we get here? This is the problem with building things tactically. Building tactically means that you're trying to solve the immediate problem that you have in the best way possible. So like, what is the better runtime right now? Is it Kubernetes or Nomad? Uh, what do you use for data storage? Uh, should, you, do you, should you go with a microservices architecture or a monolith? Or it can even be a non-technical question, like should you hire a PM or get the engineers to do the job of talking to customers, right? These are all easy patterns to fall into when we are in execution mode. The problem with building tactically only is building tactically will re could result in something that is not at the end of the day aligned to your business. And for someone who is then accountable for the business, this is not what you want. This is why I'm going to argue that platform is actually a business strategy. What do I mean by that? Well, first, let's talk about why does anyone build a platform at all? They're not cheap, they're complicated. Why, well, what do we get from them? Well, there's, there's a significant amount of literature on this on the internet already, so let's take a look, right? The guys at ThoughtWorks said that when well executed, a platform strategy promises to reduce costs and allow product development teams to focus on innovation. That sounds super attractive to me. Like, invest now, get your product teams to move faster. Luca from Humanitech. Platform engineers provide an integrated product covering the operational necessities of the entire life cycle of an application. This is also pretty attractive. Like, Get the platform teams to hide all the operational complexity so that the application engineers can focus on just building the application, right? So platform at the end of the day 
It's about increasing efficiency. And that efficiency is often human efficiency. If that's the case, the biggest stakeholder for a platform then is the business. The business is the one who stands to gain the most or lose the most when it comes to human efficiency. Let's say that you're trying to decide, do I go invest in building a storage platform that requires two to three people to build, but can speed us up for the next five years, right? The only person who can make the decision is the one, is the business owner who can then make a decision around, hey, do I even need this technology right now? Or do I not even have users yet? Okay. So these are some example of business strategy that you might take for your platform, right? Like you might decide to make minimal investment and re then rebuild, or you might decide to invest heavily upfront and then and that lets you change the focus of the company later once you invested in it. They are all completely relevant strategies. It just depends on what is the business need? How do you think about all of this? What are all the factors that you need to consider? Now, what happens if there isn't a platform strategy though? Well, to state the obvious, you have to go advocate for one or define one, depending on who you are. If you're the founder, you better define one. And just keep in mind that not having a strategy itself might be the strategy as confusing as it is, because it might just mean that you're not ready to invest any time into platform. In that case, buy or will build, and then take an off-the-shelf solution that just works like Heroku and then focus, it up, focus on other things and then come and re fix this later if you need to, right? Okay. Platform is a business strategy, but so what? How, how does that relate to principles? Like how do, I, how do I actually execute on the strategy? Well, when you execute on any strategy, there is something called an unknown unknown and they will always come up. Unknown unknowns are things that you could not have predicted upfront and that you have to deal with as part of executing the strategy. They might be product pivots. You have no idea how customers are going to react to your product. They might be scaling issues. They might be the, the behavior of this technology that you're using might just be different than what you're expecting. You might be losing some key talent because of some unexpected personal event that happened in their family. Right? These are all unknowns unknowns that you need to deal with, but there's no way you could predict it upfront. So it is imp impossible to fully predict then how a strategy will be executed. If that's the case, well, James Colling from Convex actually put it really well. But when we design project execution, a lot of us tend to think in linear terms, right? Here's milestone one, milestone two, and milestone three. We ship all of them and then customers will be happy. Things are never quite that simple though in real world execution. There is a set of acceptable solution space that's defined by the strategy, right? Like your strategy might be get this thing into the hands of the customer as soon as possible. Don't care how you build it. Don't care how you run it. Don't care where you store data, right? That that statement allows for a significant amount of potential solutions on how you actually uh, ship this product. So this is something called a corner strategy then. If the strategy, if executing on a strategy is a random walk because there is a huge amount of unknown unknown, your job is to stay within the general direction and land within the acceptable solution space, or that's what's defined as the cone of strategy. Okay, how do you stay in the cone of strategy? That's where principles come in. Once you accept that there will always be a, an amount of unknown unknowns in the execution, you will quickly realize that what you need to do with your team is teach them how to make decisions, not what decisions should be made, so that they can go make the decisions on their own when they face the unknown unknowns. Okay, let's define some principles. How do you define them? Well, there's no, there's no science to how to define principles. These are all things that you have to take various factors into account. These are just some of the things I ask myself and some of the things that I, I uh, try to tell myself to do when I, when I have to define strategies and principles for my teams. First, keep in mind that it's never a one size fits all. Just because someone else executed on this platform on their own company using a set of principles doesn't mean you can take those principles and uh, apply it to your own company. Things will be different. You have to always go back to your business need. What are you trying to solve right now in the business? Are you looking for your first customer or are you trying to build a defensible thing that you know everyone will want? Remember to factor in the rest of your circumstances, well, especially your core competency. Look around you. Who are on your team right now? What are they good at? Find a way to leverage that talent, right? Do you have the set of the strongest infrastructure people or do you happen to have a significant amount of product expertise? Take advantage of that, right? Now, you define your principles. Are you done? Unfortunately not. 
if you look at the stages of team development, you are right around here. You've got people together and you define how you want them to operate, but you haven't done any work. You basically wrote down a list of principles on a piece of paper. You haven't done any work to get the team to live by the principles and start performing based on the principles, which is where you want to be, right? Andrew Fong, my co-founder and CEO of Plotvana, actually put this really well. If you can operationalize values and principles, the micro decision making on the ground becomes much more powerful and it doesn't force us into a command and control environment, meaning that everyone can make decisions for themselves and they will all align to the principles and values that we set forth. Okay, let's talk about how to operationalize principles then. This is a huge topic on its own. I'm not going to have time to get into all the nitty gritty details of it. So I'll just provide a high level guidance what I do with my current teams and all that. First, socialize the nimble and answer inputs. If you first define the principle for your team, that probably means your team just got together and you probably like you might have missed something. Make sure that you talk to your team. Make sure that they all believe in the principles that you set forth. Right? Once you all align on the principle, then make sure that you start living by the principles to set an example for your team. Every decision that you make, run them through the set of principles and make sure that they are con they're consistent. If they're not, either the decisions is wrong or the principles is wrong or there's a special case figure out which what's going on and explain that to your team. Make sure that they understand what's going on so that they can go and make the same decisions that you would have made. And last, don't underestimate the power of positive call outs. I used to be on a team where we would call out each other on Slack all the time whenever we see people uh, do something that we think align heavily with the company values or company principles. Could be something as simple as, hey, this person did a great job with this technology because of the... And, embodying this principle that we set right and talk about why that's, that matters do this make it the norm and people will realize that's what you value now the last thing i'll say here is that alignment is a continuous process you're probably going to have to do the whole alignment and operationalizing thing over and over again especially if something's changing your team like a significant amount of new people join hopefully the principles don't change but you will have to make sure that they align to the principles Okay, let's talk about what we have learned today. Platform is a business strategy. It's at the end of the day, what the platform is serving is the business. Strategies, as we talk about, cannot be executed using only decisions that you made upfront. There will be unknown unknowns. So you have to define some principles so that people who are executing the strategy can make some decisions. Therefore, platforms must be built from first principles, the same principles that you use for the strategies. If that's the case, then make sure the principles that you define are uh, suited to your actual needs and strengths because they will be different. Everyone is slightly different. And once you have defined the principles, make sure that they're all, make sure that you operationalize them, meaning that make sure that your team understands what's going on, that they are aligned to the principles and that they're living by it. So this is the entirety, this is the end of my talk. Uh, thank you for listening. I'm going to be around for questions and discussions later on on Slack. So please come join us. Thank you very much.